Hello and welcome back to another HitFilm tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create the famous title sequence from Harry Potter. This effect can be made inside of HitFilm Express, however it will require two add-on packs, which are the Particle Simulator and the Geometries add-on pack. So without further ado, let's begin. The first thing you're going to want to do is create a new composite shot. You can rename this whatever you want and change its duration to being 10 seconds. Then hit OK. Then you want to find the particle simulator, drag and drop this onto the timeline. Now you want to open the emitter and change its shape from point to cube. Now I'm going to change the width to 1920 and the height to 1080 and the depth to 200. Now I'm going to go into the Particle Systems, Particle System, and go into General, and on the first frame you want to activate keyframing for particles per second, and set this to 100. Then move ahead by one frame and set it back to 0. Now I'm going to change my texture source from None to Built-in, and then change this to Fluffy Cloud. Now I'm going to go to Movement and change its life to 60 seconds. Now I'm going to change its scale to 200, or 300, 300 is larger, so yeah, and change its speed to 0. Now I'm going to go to the general up at the top and change this to negative 2. This has now made a giant storm that you can use. Now I'm going to create a new text layer and write Harry Potter. Now I'm going to select all of this and ch open the text controls and I'm going to scroll down to find Harry P which is the name of the font. I'm going to scale this to 250. Now I'm going to color this to a kind of goldish color. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the particle simulator to a 3D unrolled and I'm going to change the text to 3D. Now I'm going to bring the text forward and make sure I keep saving. Okay, from here I'm going to create a new light and I'm going to center it. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the text properties, go into material, activate, receives reflections, cast reflections, ambient occlusion, both of them, and cast shadows. Now in the controls for the material I'm going to change diffuse to 100 I'm going to change specular to 15, shininess to 26, and I'm going to change the emissive controls from 0 to 125, which now makes the text red, and now I'm going to change the middle property to 89, and I'm now going to change the last one to 18, and leave the others the same. Okay, from here I'm going to now find the bevel effect. I'm going to drag and drop this onto the text. Now I'm going to open the bevel properties and activate internal edges. I'm going to save this. Now I am going to add a new light and I'm going to set this light to being an ambient light and I'm going to set its uh, intensity to 3. This is just to add some basic outlining light. Now I'm going to copy the light and the particle system by right clicking on all of what well, I'm going to click on the particle system, hold down control and click on the lights. Now I'm going to copy these Go to the media tab, create a new composite shot, and call this background. Or BG. Set its properties to be the same as your title sequence, and then hit OK. Now I'm going to paste these in. Now I'm going to go back to the titles, and I'm going to drag the background comp down to the bottom of the stack. Now I'm going to go back to the text. Inside of the material properties, there is one called environment map. And I'm going to change this to layer then the layer I'm going to set to being the background. Okay, so now you've done this, so now you might want to be creating 
the sort of lightning flashes that are going on in the background for this shot. So to do this I'm going to press new layer and I'm going to create a new point. I'm going to create this point as being a 3D point which will mean that I can move it around in 3D space. Okay, so I'm going to start it off by pushing it slightly further back so I'm going to set this to negative 30 as well and I'm just going to move it up to the top corner. Okay, now I'm going to activate keyframing by pressing on the circle next to position. Then I'm going to move along, move it across to here, and just keep doing this. Remember that the lightning is random. Okay, so now you've animated the point, you now want to open the transform settings and just fill in any spaces that you might want to do that to. And now select all of your keyframes and set them to and select them and change them to constant. That means that as soon as a new keyframe appears, it'll move over to there. Okay. So now you want to create a new light. And this light is going to be your lightning. So you want to go to frame one and set the like parent the parent the light to the new point and you want to zero out its position. As you can see it is affected. If you want it to be slightly brighter then just grab the light and just move it forward slightly. Okay. So now we need to animate the intensity so that you have your sudden moment, your, your flash of lightning and then it'll fade off and then flash, fade off. This will happen every time that it moves. So on frame one, where you created your first position keyframe, you want to open the light properties and set an intensity keyframe. Move back by one frame and set it down to zero. And then move ahead by a couple of frames and set it back down to zero. Move along to your next movement. Create, set it back to 100. Move back by a frame, set it to zero. Then move ahead by a couple, set it back to zero. Keep doing this for all of the keyframes. Okay, so now that you've gone through animating the intensity, so you have your flash of lightning, fades off, then it moves, flash of lightning, fades out. And now you want to grab your text layer and go in a couple of frames, I'm going in four frames, and I'm now going to grab the transform settings and scale it up by 1900. This will mean that you can no longer see it because you're in the gap between the Harry and the Potter, but if you have other words you might have to also tweak position as well. So four frames in, I'm going to activate keyframing for scale. Now I'm going to move ahead five frames and set its scale back down to 100. And then I'm going to do a similar thing from the end, but I'm going to go back by four frames. One, two, three, four. And now I'm going to set the scale to 1900. Move back by one, two, three, four, five and set this back down to 100 again. Now I'm going to open the transform keyframes for the text and set them to smooth. This will just make the animation look slightly more clean. Make it look slightly more realistic is to add a blur. Drag and drop that onto the text layer. And now you want to set its radius to being something super small like 0.2 which just adds that incredibly subtle blur of edge pixels. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe um, for more content. And if you have any suggestions for some more hit film tutorials that you want me to make, then please leave them in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed, and uh, 
goodbye.